All right then, so you may be asking yourself, why are you doing this for the third time? Why are you ranking ideologies for the third time? Well, because I have nothing to do. Because I'm bored. I'm really bored with YouTube. And also because I have studied some other political ideologies that before I thought were just dumb or oxymorons, but then I learned a little bit about them and thought they were interesting, such as anarcho-monarchism and anarcho-fascism. So, yeah, and also I got a new microphone, so this probably sounds better than before, am I right? Okay, um, yeah, so that's about it. This is my opinion, and this is based on intellectual only. This is not about how well the ideology works, this is just about what I think about it. Okay, cool. Alright, then, so beginning with the best tier... The best tier first is capitalism. Now, I've already probably, you know, in the comments, if you have spoken with me in the comments, you probably know why I like capitalism. Because capitalism, as I see it, is natural human behavior and what humans naturally do to sustain themselves. You know, they exchange property, they own private property, co compete with each other and exchange. And that's how and that's what drives the society, you know. That's how that that's how you drive the society, and that society has always been functioned and structured over basically hum, hum, hum basically over humanity's existence. So I I basically think that it's inevitable, and that it, the only way to achieve progress, well, you know, real progress, not like you know what I'm gonna mention at, but later, but real progress in society, and to improve the society is capitalism the rest are basically just austrian ideologies and ideologies that i sympathize with and really like as i'm libertarian i believe in this libertarian social order so yeah they're all really interesting but since i don't want to have to make this like an hour i'm just gonna cut it right there okay so next is the love tier which is the ideologies that i you know really 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 like well, I love them, but not as much as the best tier. So most of them are fairly self-explanatory. Narco-monarchism is the only one that's a little bit strange. Because for some people, it seems like an oxymoron. But if you study, if you actually study into it, it's not. It's like a basically a system of a monarchy ruling over a stateless society. Like something like a, a ceremonial king in anarcho-capitalism in a narco-capitalist-like society with private law. So it's possible, it's, it's very fringe, but it's it can be a good system, in my opinion. Next is the really like tier, which is, yeah, just the ideologies I really like. Most of them are self-explanatory. Constitutional monarchism works well. I like conserve traditions and values civic nationalism is the best form of nationalism in my opinion when people integrate into the society rather than being split on arbitrary differences collective arbitrary differences like race and ethnicity so the best form of nationalism by far agorism is basically this black market anti-state is kind of like ancap strategy to fight against the state which it's not too effective but i guess i support it if people want to do it i'm not going to personally do it i don't want to be arrested but yeah, so next is the like tier. So this is where things start getting a little bit strange because I have some weird ideologies in here. But let's start off with one, which is neo-reactionaryism. Neo-reactionaryism, also known as the dark enlightenment, is a basically a libertarian ideology that doesn't oppose the state. Well, it does oppose like a tyrannical, collective, democratic state, but it doesn't oppose the state, which is interesting but I also respect it. Next is feudalism, which is the system that was used throughout Europe, basically throughout the Middle Ages. And I don't see why people hate it so much. It was a decent system. It was a very decentralized system. Individuals had a good amount of freedom. If you were a peasant, for example, you were guaranteed protection. You could, you only had to give up 10% of your, basically of your uh, produce, of your production. And you were guaranteed protection. You were you you couldn't be drafted, and you basically had whichever land you needed. And yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't exactly the amazing system, but yeah, it's pretty decent. 
Paleo conservatism is a method of conservatism. The reason I like it slightly less is because it's more statist. But other than that, it's good. Pinochetism. Yeah, this is where kind of people are like, okay, you support dictators? And I'm like, sort of. Pinochet made Chile objectively a better country. Ch Ch Chile at that time was very, 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 very socialist. Whereas now, after Pinochet, well, not now, it became socialist again, rip Chile, but rest in peace, Chile. But yeah, Pinochet definitely made it economically more free, definitely even made it ec more libertarian, I would say. He made the country objectively better, partially thanks to, yes, yeah, Chicago, thanks to the Chicago school helping him, like Milton Friedman, but still, he did make Chile a better country. Yeah, he used excessive violence, in my opinion, but to be honest, if you have socialists who want to destroy your society and who are aggressing against you, I think you can remove them. Ordo liberalism is a form of liberalism, definitely not as good as classical liberalism, seeing as the big disparity in tiering. Because it believes in the state to use to enforce the free market, which isn't really the incentive of the state because the state doesn't want to do that. So I'm like sort of ah about it, but it's still good. I like it. So next is neutral tier, which is the most numerous tier aside from the hate tier. So we have nationalism, which I feel like I'm a I'm mixed about nationalism. On one hand, nationalism does, you know, it's very varied. It's a it's a diverse ideology, and it does support, especially now in this current time of, of the mass migration, it does definitely restore the traditional values. But it does enforce the state, and it does call for a nation state, which kind of ruins it for me. Monarchism is an ideology that is basically been used throughout all of human history again just like capitalism but unlike capitalism monarchism can be very destructive and authoritarian if done incorrectly if you have a decentralized monarchy but then it's just constitutional monarchism so constitutional monarchism is the objective better form of monarchism for me but monarchism it almost always is objectively superior to democracy so at least that's something and all collectivism for that matter but if it's very authoritarian and ruling over a huge amount of land and very centralized, it can be very destructive. So it's kind of like that it can be very good, but it also can be extremely bad and destructive, almost on the same level as collectivism. So that's why I'm mixed about it. Authoritarian capitalism, self-explanatory. It's capitalist, but it's authoritarian. Egoism is a strange philosophy, in my opinion. It's a, it's a individualist ideology, but it's against capitalism, so... Okay, I, I don't really understand. Mutualism is basically the original anarchism. It calls for exchange, but without private property. So how can you exchange without private property? What are you exchanging? That doesn't make sense. Because exchange implies private property. So weird philosophy. Anarchism is just the basic bare bones anarchism. So nothing really much to say about that. Georgism is basically the same thing as mutualism, except even more on markets, but without private property again, so that makes no sense. Okay. Narco-fascism. This is the weird one. This is the weird one, like in narco-monarchism, although I like it less. There are two forms. I think it's called Nilsonian, yes, and Devonian. I, I can't remember the pronunciation. I'm very sorry. But Nilsonian is the superior one because it calls for... It's basically like a voluntarist capitalist. So it's basically like a narco-capitalism, but based on the ideas of reactionaryism and a collective society based on the ideas, yeah, of reactionaryism and of, and of anti-feminism. So I guess, I don't really like the fact though that it's kind of like a little bit like, well, I guess fascism implies collectivism. So neutral about it, Devonianism is even worse. But I haven't studied so much about it, so I guess I'm neutral for now. Probably will dislike it, but it's not horrible, honestly. Since it's anarchism, it can't really do that much harm, in my opinion. Unlike statism. Narco-communism is, like, it's voluntary. And, it, for example, they already exist, like, in kibbutz in Israel. So, I guess it works, but not a huge fan. Narco-syndicalism is basically narco-communism, but done by the workers. And communalism is basically narco-communism. So, yeah, no real differences. Okay, so now let's move on to the dislike a little tier. 
which is basically filled with ideologies that I don't really like too much. I'm starting to get into the don't like. Democratic monarchism is an inferior version of real monarchism because monarchism at least has a reasonable hierarchy, whereas a democratic monarchism uses elements of democracy, which is bad, of course, because democracy is collectivist. But at least, unlike, you don't have just a temporary ruler who loots and robs your country every four years. Because in democracy, again, there's no incentive to take good care of your country since you don't own it. You don't care about it. So if you're going to have a state where you own the country, democracy is the worst way to run it. Monarchism is the best. So it uses elements of democracy. That's why it's bad. Li liberalism, modern liberalism is far gone from classic liberalism where classic liberalism is truly about freedom natural rights capitalism and all that other good stuff whereas modern liberalism is basically social moderate social justice and welfare statism so not a big fan of it at all social liberalism is the same thing but with more emphasis on social values so i don't like it American conservatism is a far gone from conservatism as well because it's barely conservative and basically it's just a hive mind between the right and the left. I hate them both. Well, I guess it's not, not in a hate tier, but I don't really like them. Social libertarianism is a fake form of libertarianism that is basically proto, or sorry, just moderate, again, welfare statism and social justice warriors and due to supporting positive rights. Titoism is, I guess, the best form of socialism that I could think of. Well, state socialism, anyway, not like anarcho-communism. Eh, not a big fan of it, to be honest. Anarcho-primitivism is basically just anarcho-communism, but even dumber, so yeah. Moving on, feminism is a collectivist movement. So, collectivist movement based on only females, and it's social justice warriors, so don't like it. Environmentalism is a useful puppet of progressivism and generally a socialist movement. Literally, Earth Day is on the literally the creation of Earth Day was on the 100th anniversary of Lenin's birthday, so that explains something. Fall, I, I forget, I don't know how to pronounce this. Falangalism, fan. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it's I don't really know too much about it, but it seems like fascism, so I don't like it. I probably need to research more about that. Fascism is unlike an. I dislike it even more than narco-fascism because at least in narco-fascism, despite it being very flawed, at least can do damage because it's, you know, it doesn't have a state. On the other hand, fascism can. But fascism is still a superior form compared to Marxist-Leninism and Nazism and all that other junk because at least it, you know, it doesn't starve your people and it also at least allows for some elements of free market. It's a third position as ideology while being very totalitarian and ultranationalism but at least it does allow at least it does care about tradition some Mussolini's version doesn't but it looks like Francoism does so I don't like it and I don't I'm definitely not you know a crypto fascist but yeah I don't like it at least that was better than Nazism and socialism neoconservatism fake conservatism just go boom bomb Middle East yeah shit Neoliberalism, same thing as neoconservatism, just cares more about, you know, liberalism. So, yeah, no. Mercantilism, outdated economic system based on, based on, you know, only, only exporting, no importing, and doesn't, and doesn't realize the benefits of global trade, so no. And corporatism is a fake form of capitalism created by the state to, basically, it's cronyism, it's cronyism, it's created by the state Corporations are created by the state to benefit the state, and without competition, it becomes a monopoly. So the state introduces mini-monopolies to help it in its position as a monopoly. So corporatism is fake capitalism. Okay, so now let's move on to the hate tier, which is mostly just socialist ideologies, classic Marxism, Marxist-Leninism, Stalinism, Trotskyism, Maoism. So these, of course, Trotskyism and Stalinism are rivals, and one is internationalism, one is, one is nationalist, or sorry, just, sorry, socialism in one state, which is so not nationalist. I hate all of them, I don't care. They're all socialist, they're all aggressive, and they're all basically just state-owned means of production, and yeah. Social democracy is, of course, democracy, which is already collectivist, but based on social values and positive rights. So at least they even admit it. 
And democratic socialism finally admits that democracy is socialism. That democracy, which is the 51% or greater, oppressing the 49% or less, is socialism. Finally, they realized. Okay, so then we have Nazism and all of its variants, aka National Bolshevism and... I don't know how to pronounce the other one. Stereism? I don't know. I have horrible pronunciation. But yeah, I, I hate all of them. Ultranationalism is nationalism, but even more extreme. And it's dumb. It just, it's just dumb. Okay, so next we have the tier, which is menaces of civilization. Now, these are by far my two most hated ideologies. And the ideologies have done by far the most damage to Western civilization than any others. Hence, menaces of civilization. Socialism, which is very self-explanatory, because socialism and the ideas of egalitarianism and equality have done extremes amount of damage. Literally, socialism has killed 100 million additional lives. For what? For trying to... And socialism claim that they support equality, but they only support equality amongst the people who are not running the state. So, so the state gets to stay out of this quote-unquote equality which basically equality meaning that everyone suffers equally no one has anything and no one owns anything under socialism except the state and then we have progressivism which doesn't care about progress it just names itself progressivism because progressivism is seeking to infiltrate the west and is basically a form of cultural marxism thanks to the frankfurt school and this ideology in, in the past, what, 60 years, 50 years probably, has done extremes amount of damage to my country. It's unbelievable. My country has turned from a, okay, I'm not even going to put it, fairly prosperous. It did allow, you know, it did kind of fall off the right track, of the wrong track after, you know, the Federal Reserve was established and the New Deal was formed and FDR and Nixon cut, cut the U.S. off the gold standard, but you know, these are things that, you know, okay, they're not tolerable. They made our country worse for sure. But at least you can, you know, they didn't destroy our country completely. The, this idea of quote-unquote progressivism and the Frankfurt School have almost entirely destroyed American culture, destroyed the, the Western civilization, and now it's infiltrating every single, like, college school in our country. And it's just... It needs to be destroyed. I don't even know what to say. It just needs to be destroyed. This ideology needs to be removed. People shouldn't believe in this. If if there's any progressive, uh, you're a threat. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to think like that because I'm not going to try to be a collectivist. But yeah, this uh, this idea of progressivism is is a, is horrible. It's just by far, probably, along with socialism, of course, the worst. And they're intertwined, by the way. They're not separate. They're, they're a collective movement, and they're working together to destroy Western civilization. Okay, so the final tier is oxymorons. These are, I'm not, these are just non-rankable oxymorons, like capitalist communism, which, of course, is an oxymoron. Yeah, you can, I, I guess maybe you can make an art, but for, it's, no, it's an oxymoron. Progressivism, conservatism, market socialism. Now, market socialism, people would say that's not an oxymoron, but you can own markets on their socialism. Market, it means... You have economic competition, economic opportunity, division of labor, and private property to actually exchange in the market. And of course, since you don't own private property, you can't exchange anything, so there's no market, so markets can exist under socialism. Libertarian socialism is not possible due to the fact that under socialism, the government owns the means of production completely, and that requires a big government to actually attempt to even solve the calculation problem, as Mises put it. But you cannot solve this. It's inevitable that you have a calculation problem. But libertarian socialism is not can, is not possible and cannot exist. That's why it's an oxymoron, because the state, a large state, is necessary to, you know, own and the means of production. A small state cannot do that. And in general, libertarian socialism just cannot exist because people, if there is a decentralized entity with a small or even no statism, which is default to capitalism, because as I said, capitalism is the natural human system and the result of proxyology. Proxyology being this, the human action. Okay, so libertarian market socialism is a just a combination of market socialism and libertarian socialism. So obviously oxymoron and anarcho nazbull is some edgy kid created a design on Policom Wiki. Okay, and that's it.
Hope you guys enjoyed this kind of long video. Bye. And see you in hopefully the next video. Goodbye.